Hello and welcome to this video on how to crack NPAT. NPAT as you know is an exam to get into any of your graduation programs at NMIMS University like a BBA course or a BSc Finance or a BSc Economics or even a plain BCom Honours. Okay. Uh, so directly getting into NPAT, how has been NPAT for this year is what we are going to see first. So starting with paper pattern, uh, it has three sections. Uh, all the sections have 40 questions and a total of 100 minutes is what you get. Okay, uh, The three sections that you know are quant, logic and verbal. Marks per question, one mark for every correct answer that you give and no negative marking. That's correct. Okay, So this shifts a lot uh, for your strategy when you are actually taking the paper, when you are practicing mocks because there is no negative marking. There is no question of uh, leaving a question unattempted. Okay. Uh, order of the sections this year uh, has been fixed. You don't really have a choice to switch between the sections. You start with quant, you then go to logic and you then go to finally go to verbal. In case any of you are wondering, no, no calculators are allowed in the exam. So having a quick overview of how NPAT 2023 was, you can refer to the table. So quantitative ability, as you know, had 40 questions. The level of difficulty we thought was moderate. Uh, anywhere around 25 would be a good attempts uh, in, in this section for this year. Okay, We recommend that you do not take more than 35 minutes for this section. Moving on to logic, uh, it was easy to moderate, moderate only in the case where uh, not that the questions are difficult, only in the case where the questions are lengthy. Okay, uh, Logic, I think it is going to be very rare that you do not understand the question or you have no clue uh, what the question is. Uh, more common is that you get stuck in a lengthy question. Okay, So, you are going to get right answers uh, more often than not, but important in logic is to not only get the right answers, but get the right answers in the best possible time. Okay, So, that is the tricky bit in logic that you have to tackle. Uh, anyway, so uh, 30 to 35 are good attempts out of 40 and we think you should give proper 40 minutes to this section. So, you are able to do the easier ones also and the lengthy ones also. So, you maximize your score uh, in this section. Verbal as always has been easy. Okay, uh, So, 35 to even 40 would not be a bad number for attempts uh, and you need to really have very good accuracy with verbal. Okay, uh, So, and because the questions are not very lengthy, the RCs are not very, very long and there are no difficult critical reasoning questions that you will see in other exams. We think 25 minutes should be good enough for you to be able to tackle this section. So yeah, 90 to 100 uh, would be good attempts out of 120. Assuming even 80-85% accuracy, a score of 80 to 85 should be good enough for you to be able to score a rank less than 2000. Uh, a, a rank less than 2000 in the final uh, you know, uh, applications, I think is safe for you to be able to get into a BBA course or a BCom Honours course or a, even a, a BSc Finance or a BSc Economics course. In case you are applying for liberal arts or something, because it is a separate school, uh, you will have to have a rank which is in thousands Okay, for you to be safe. Now, moving on to each section in detail, we start with quantitative ability. We thought the overall section was moderate uh, for this year. Okay, uh, This is the table uh, which we have gathered from whatever our students uh, have given us the data. Uh, as always, trigonometry, set theory, uh, functions are dominating uh, the questions. So, if you see, uh, uh, almost around uh, you know 13 to 14 questions have come only from these three topics. Okay, But yes, arithmetic has never disappointed. So, if you are good at arithmetic, you still should be able to do a good 10-15 questions from arithmetic also. Uh, DI mostly is, is you know, connected to arithmetic. So, another 10 questions of DI uh, should also help your cause. Uh, statistics, we have put a question mark there. Uh, people who have got, have got around 4-5 questions of statistics. People who have not, have not got any question on statistics. So, depending on, you know, your luck, you may see uh, either nothing of statistics or you may see a good 3, 4, 5, even 5 questions of statistics. Statistics as an area can be a little tricky uh, when it comes to NPAT. Uh, the, the basic mean, median, mode formulas uh, are there to apply. If the, if the questions can be solved using those, good enough. If not, they are a little tricky. So, I would advise that you stay away from such questions. 
questions on functions and trigo can be solved using shortcuts. So, we will discuss that a little later, okay. But yeah, this is how the spread has been of the 40 questions this year. We think the good attempts will can be anywhere between 24, 26, 27, or uh, 25 also should be all right, okay, uh, for, for this particular attempt. So, if you are decent in mathematics, uh, if you are decent in this particular subject, I think you should be able to do at least 18 to 20 questions. If you think you are really good at it, go for a good 28, 29 attempts. So, yes, scoring areas uh, for this particular section as we discussed, arithmetic, number system and modern maths. Modern maths will include topics like PNC, probability, set theory especially, that has been single most important topic across years uh, in NPAT. Uh, so, these are the three uh, main scoring areas. Obviously, you need to know your algebra, uh, the linear quadratic equation well and you know other such basic stuff also. Uh, DI, as I told you, is connected to arithmetic. So, DI 10 questions, 12 questions questions also at times uh, can be really scoring because they are generally relevant to either percentage or profit loss or averages or something. Uh, so, that should also be within your, you know, to be attempted domain. Uh, attempt easier questions on trigo and functions. Trigo functions, they come like in, in groups of 10, 11 questions uh, both together. Uh, but, you know, a, a, a decent number of questions, like I would say at least 5 to 6 questions out of those 10 questions can be solved using shortcuts. So, Trigo, I think the, the, the thing that works for me the most is, uh, if I don't know anything, if I just convert every ratio to sign cost, I think I am able to reach somewhere. So, that should be the first thing that can be tried in Trigo. Uh, in questions where the questions are on theta and a range of theta is given, like theta is between 0 to 90 or 0 to 180. I think assuming the a value of a theta, which is according to the value given, uh, is the best and the shortest possible way out of that particular question. So, assume the values of theta, maybe convert everything to sin and cos, know your uh, all silver teacups, the quadrants, which of them are positive. I think these three and the two, three basic identities that you have done in your 9, 10 sin square plus cos square is 1, 1 plus cot square is cosec square and 1 plus tan square sec square. I think these three are also enough. Just knowing this much, I think should should help you attempt at least three to uh, you know three questions, four questions of trigo. Uh, for functions also, uh, uh, you know I think functions is a topic that has mastered the skill uh, of of you know scaring the students away. Uh, but they are mostly deceptively uh, easy, you know. Uh, so if you if you think through the question, most of the questions can be solved using simple substitution. But they don't even have very lengthy calculations. It's simple substitution that can that can get your way uh, through the functions question. Uh, just know your basics like what is an even function or function, what is an inverse of a function and that should be it. So, I, you know, we do not really expect that you know functions in depth or trigo in depth uh, to be able to do really well at NPAT. Uh, having known other topics properly like the arithmetic, the number system, the DI, uh, even if you do basics of functions and trigo, I think the 25-26 attempts out of 40 should not be difficult at all for any of you. Moving on to logical reasoning, uh, we thought the section is easy to moderate. Uh, easy, most of the times it is medium or moderate only and only in the case of time consuming questions. So, logic, you know, uh, I think it, you have to try really, really hard to get an answer wrong. Okay, uh, so uh, I don't think anybody of you who 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 you know who practiced enough uh, will be not will not be able to solve a question. You should be able to solve a question given unlimited time. But that's not the case, is it? Uh, so uh, the only trick in logic is to get it in the best possible time. And logic, as as we discussed also earlier, uh, is going to be the area that you should go for maximizing your score. Try as many questions as possible, and hence reserve a good forty minutes for this section. So this year, visual reasoning questions, uh, which started last year, uh, are coming this year also, and a good six to eight questions is what most of our students have reported, and they are easy. Okay, so if you practice the two, three basic types of visual reasoning like the odd one out or completing the series or even paper folding or cube, uh, you should be able to easily do these eight questions. Uh, syllogisms as always are simple and the normal types, okay, not very different, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, five questions there. Uh, the third topic, data sufficiency or data comparison is one thing that you have to be a little choosy about. Uh, don't blindly go and attempt uh, all of these five questions. They may just 
you know take a lot of your time uh, because they are going to be calculation intensive so just pick your questions right of which questions you want to attempt coding decoding verbal reasoning venn diagrams all are absolutely as what you have otherwise been practicing uh, so nothing really out of the ordinary okay just keep practicing logic i think the 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 most critical aspect is to uh, keep practicing not lose touch uh, with any of the topics uh, so yeah uh, good attempts we think are uh, 30 to 35 uh, questions if you can go push yourself and go beyond 35 excellent nothing like it uh, but having said this and uh, you know we are assuming that you give 40 minutes we are we are assuming that you have 85 to 90 percent accuracy like ac uh, speed at the cost of accuracy is the most pointless thing ever okay uh, so strategy this is the only two point strategy that we have for logic uh, one is practice keep practicing 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 every day every day try practicing at least 40 50 70 100 questions purely for you to not lose touch with the topic okay and to be in the groove don't lo don't lose that thing of you know if you if you have a gap of 4 or 5 days of not practicing logic you are going to falter at least with the speed if not with the accuracy okay so you have to focus on both speed and accuracy in quant at times you know in some topics it's enough if you are accurate uh, because you have done easier questions so for difficult questions you will have time so speed is not that much of a concern but in logic speed and accuracy both will be a concern accuracy because everybody who attempts is going to get right it get it right anyway so if you are getting right you not really you know are better than others you are better than others only if you get it right in the best possible time so that's going to be your distinguishing factor with respect to everybody else so yeah so that's all so logic only mantra is practice practice and practice moving on to the next section uh, english or verbal as always uh, and has been for years the section is easy this year also uh, again uh, at the rc there are two to three passages around 10 to 12 questions uh, and very very simple direct questions not really focusing on very indirect questions the tone of the passage and the author agrees uh, with everything except those kind of questions are not seen easier level questions are seen more direct more fact based questions are seen uh, fill in the blanks close passages generally students have reported that they have, so, they have seen two passages each having four to five blanks there okay uh, para jumbles again uh, normal vocabulary a big big thing so uh, you know uh, topics like vocabulary even uh, grammar even conclusions you will be able to get your way through uh, all of this if you are strong with your vocab so rc grammar vocab i think that should do the trick for english uh, good attempts we think are 35 to 40 uh, simply because they are not going to be time consuming at all so even in a span of 25 minutes i think people who are really good at english should be able to touch the 40 question mark uh, in 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 terms of the number of attempts okay even calculating 80 to 85% accuracy your score should not be anything less than 32 to 35 yeah so and because the section is predominantly easy you know uh, scoring areas uh, rc vocab and grammar very very important uh, you that you keep doing your vocab regularly rc practice uh, every day okay so vocab is something that is inherently memory based so you will need to keep doing that and keep revising what you have done two days ago three days ago regularly and generally as an everyday uh, regime just keep practicing three to four rcs two to three rcs on a daily basis uh, make sure that you are timing yourself okay? because again it's important that you save time in verbal uh, and you give that time to either logic or quant wherever it is required wherever we are able to maximize the scores so overall we thought npat 23 was easy to moderate not difficult at all uh, in excess of 80 would be a safe score for you to be able to land uh, any one of the top 3 to 4 courses available at nmims uh, section wise i think these sh should be your targets to 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 be able to cross that 80 to 85 barrier okay uh, cons uh, 20 I, we, we are taking very conservative estimates here. So, quant 20, logic 30, verbal 35. This should be help you, help you reach that 85 mark. Or uh, you know, somewhere if you go one or two questions further wrong, 80 to 83 should also be good enough for you to be able to uh, breach that 80 mark. And you know, it's our best uh, estimate that if you cross an 80, 85 uh, in an actual impact, uh, more or less you are safe with respect to your admissions. Overall, 
what should you do for an exam like NPAT, which does not have negative marking, which does not have any section wise time limit. Okay, you need to maximize your strength area. So, out of the three, whatever your strength is, maximize the score there. Okay, the general observation has been that logic is the strongest simply because the questions are easy, it's not difficult at all. But the tricky part is, as I told you earlier, uh, getting in the best possible time. So, again, if you practice, practice, and practice enough, you should be able to maximize your logic. You should be maximizing verbal. It's it's easier to do well in verbal than to do well in con. If you are inherently good at maths, excellent, nothing like it. But that does not mean that you don't do well in verbal. Okay. Uh, so in your weak section also, I think you should score at least 50%. So if there are 40 questions in any of the section, 20 is the bare minimum that you should aim for in even in your weakest uh, section. Okay. Other strong sections, definitely more than 35. So if you are going to score only a 20, let's say in quant, if you do a 35 and a 35 in logic and verbal, you will still be able to reach that, you know, 80-ish mark with 85% accuracy. So that's why a bare minimum of 20 in your weakest area. Uh, I am assuming the weakest area may be, if at all, be quant, uh, not verbal or logic. But logic, verbal, if they are weak, it's easy to work on them and bring them up to the par. Okay. Plan uh, as always for two to three attempts. Okay. In case you are going to take your exam this particular year, 23, uh, from now on, if you can plan three attempts, excellent. If not, have at least two attempts. Uh, write three to four mocks before every, every attempt. Okay. Uh, make sure that you are in that groove of paper, uh, uh, you know, writing the exam in the, in that environment also. So take your mocks very seriously. Uh, even if you are attempting at home, do it very seriously. Uh, keep yourself, uh, you know, free for 100 minutes. Don't take breaks, uh, which are anyway not allowed in the actual exam and, and be as sincere as possible. Uh, be as disciplined as possible in terms of regular practice because I think that's the single most distinguishing factor uh, between getting an admit into NMIMS and not getting an admit into NMIMS. So, yeah, that will be it uh, for how to crack NPAT. I think if you do these these many things that we have discussed in the video today, uh, it's it will be difficult for you to not get a seat uh, at, at NMIMS, uh, okay, in any of the campuses that you wish to. So, all the very best and do really well uh, at your NPATs and see you.